Welcome to Electro Online. Our next example involves two light capacitors. They're both two microfarad capacitors. They both contain charge. One contains 40 microcoulombs. The other one contains 60 microcoulombs of charge. Now we're connecting those two capacitors together, positive end to positive end. The question is, what happens next? And what will be the final charge in each capacitor when things run its course, when we get to the steady state situation? Since they're the same size, you'd expect that in the end it will carry the same amount of capacitance, or I should say the same amount of charge, not, not the same amount of capacitance. But what that means is that charge is going to begin to move from the capacitor that has the most charge to the capacitor that has the least amount of charge. In other words, this positive charge here will migrate to the other capacitor, increasing that capacitor's charge. Of course, that means that positive charge will be pushed in this direction and that will cancel out one of these negative charges and that means as a positive charge gets pushed away here you have additional negative charge on that side so that's what we expect to happen but to make sure we know what the end result will be what we're looking at here is we're going to use Kirchhoff's rules by moving all the way around the circuit this here has voltage 1 across capacitor with the positive end over there and the negative end over here. Here we have voltage 2 across the capacitor, positive end over there, and negative end over here. We can say then that if we go around starting from here, that plus V1 minus V2 equals to 0, or V1 equals V2. Using the definition of capacitance, we know that capacitance is equal to charge divided by the voltage, which means that voltage is equal to charge divided by capacitance. What we're going to do now is replace V1 and V2 by this ratio. That means that Q1, which represents the end charge on capacitor C1, divided by C1 must equal Q2 divided by C2, Q2 being the end charge on capacitor 2. Since C1 and C2 is the same, so we can say since, C1 equals C2, we can get rid of C1 and C2, and we can say that Q1 must equal Q2, and that the sum of the two charges, Q1 plus Q2, must equal the total charge we started with, since we're connecting positive to positive, so that means it is equal to Q1 plus Q2, where Q1 and Q2 are the original charges on the two capacitors, which means that Q1 plus Q2 is equal to 40 plus 60, which is 100 microcoulombs. Now we're going to leave off the microcoulombs to make it a cleaner equation. So if Q1 plus Q2 equals 100, that means Q2 is equal to 100 minus Q1, which can, oh, this is Q2, which can be plugged into here. And continuing over here, we can write that Q1 is equal to Q2, which is 100 minus Q1, bringing the Q1 across, 2Q1 equals 100, which means Q1 equals 50 microcoulombs. And then, of course, since Q1 equals Q2, we can say Q2 equals 50 microcoulombs as well. And that's how we find the end charge on those two capacitors. Again, you may say, well, that's such an easy problem. Why do you bother with all that? Once you realize that they're equal to one another and you know that the total charge was 100 microcoulombs, each should have 50. And you're absolutely correct. However, as it gets more complicated, you'll be glad you understand this methodology. So that's how we do this one. On to the next one, where in that case, we're going to connect positive to negative and see what happens then.